um, I really enjoyed this documentary. And um, one of the things that kind of, that really touched me was um, how this story that, you know, people like Emmett and, jo and Joyce Lynn in the community grew up just, it was just basically in your DNA, how you were able to take it. And after everything came out, start, you know, I don't know, I, I, I don't know how to properly say this, like not making it okay, but telling the people, the, the white people who are descended from the enslavers that this is, you're the descendants as well. And you have a, 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 a something, a role in this, a responsibility in this. And it doesn't have to be a negative thing. We can all work together and do something about it. I, there was like a, a couple of scenes where you talk, you guys talked about it. I wanna know, has anything come from that? Has there been any more, you know, collaboration or anything to kind of really get out there, you know, listening to Margaret even um, talking about, to, to teach people, you know, um, outside the community and especially white people that, you know, y'all were descendants of this and y'all this, and you have to take some responsibility of this, I guess, um, putting that history out there um, outside of your community. Has there been any further effort? That's a long convoluted question, but I, I was trying to be delicate about the way I phrased it, but um, I can I can clarify if anybody needs me to, but I would like every uh, first Emmett and Joyce Lynn both to answer and then everyone else. Could, uh, for me, like, could you just get that last part back out for me? I don't think I heard the, the last part of what you're saying. Are you asking, is there any outside help? now? Or? Is there any outside help or even in, any collaboration? Is there anything happening to make this, you know, to kind of expand on that, you know, Black people are not the only descendants who need to be reckon, reckoning with this right now part. Okay, well, well, I can only speak from, um, you know, my standpoint on that, because I, I really, I can't tell you what anyone else is doing. But for me, um, I am now getting to the stage where I'm having a lot more people that's trying to reach out and they're trying to gain the knowledge of it first. So, I mean, I feel like that's the first step anyway. Your first step is you can't, you can't help anything until you know what you're helping. So it, I have a lot of people that's uh, outside of the community, but you know, I base all of my stuff in the community. So for me, it was more, I was more happy to see my community pull together and try to stand strong as one so we can get that help from the outside. Um, when you talk about um, collaboration, um, wow, like my friends who I grew up with have, you know, when you say you don't talk to someone for a long time, but you can pick back up to where you guys left off. A good friend of mine called me. She was like, hey, Joycelyn, gosh, you know, we lived on Man Street. You know, we live in this area like I never knew. And these you know, I, that's that's what I'm getting now as far as outreach, like people saying I never knew. And the funny thing I told some friends of mine, I was like, yeah, but we grew up on Grover, Clarence and Eugene Street. I was like, do you guys know what that's about? I was like, those are Timothy Mayer's other children. Those street names are named after their other children. And they're like, wow. So it's, it's always an, an, a moment of teaching within, right? Um, this story is, is going globally where everybody, um, the descendants has a, um, a website where you can uh, click on resources and there are several books that, that are written on the Africa town slash Clotilda story where people can go and get their own knowledge and they can choose what, what books that they feel that they like the best. But in collaborations, um, and I hope I'm answering your question correctly, I will say that um, Captain Foster's cousin who's in the film my foster, I think I talk to him every other day. <laughs> so um, he is, um, he's always checking on, on us and, you know, asking, you know, where are we going next? You know, how, he'll, he'll let me know how the film is going. So it's, it's a lot of moving pieces as far as within the community and collaborations. Um, the, where I work at my school is, is very receptive of the, of the story. So I'm able to share the story at my school. So I'm, I'm able to share it at my school and with my, my friends who I grew up with for forever. And we just never really talked about it. We just lived in this area. I mean, I knew about it, but it just, it wasn't a topic of conversation. 
I think part of your question was how is the white community working with the black? Is that was that part of your conversation? Um, I mean, there's a few, there's a lot of layers to that question. Um, one thing I saw happen when we screened the film in Mobile at the Sanger Theater, which seats like 1800 people, is a reparations conversation start like in that room. I don't know, I think Emmett kind of just like opened it up. And then it was written about in the paper. And then people were talking about it. And I think there's something about the film um, that like, I think sometimes white people are scared of the word reparations, even though it means repair, they're afraid. And there's something about a tangible ship where people can connect it to something that they can see and see a harm was done. And this, where I think it like, there was something about the conversation that happened in that theater where it's like, oh, like there's a way to talk about this, you know, that I, I felt like happened on, it, it felt palpable, like it happened on a city level. Um, you know, I do think the white powers that be in Mobile, largely Republican, um, are sort of waiting to see how far, how much legs the film has, how far it gets, so they can just like come out of their, they're like kind of in hiding now, but there was this newsletter that was released two days ago from that's backed by industry groups in Africa town that is like the the in, industrial complex there that kind of whitewashed the movie and made it seem like reframed it i'm sure emmett and joycelyn can talk about this I, I i haven't like scrutinized the letter as much as i should but i know that kern taught the taught the newsletter in his class two days ago to his african american studies program he said look at this letter and talk about how they're switching the message so they can like so it can fit like the industrial message and not the activist message of the community. So there's this constant pushback from the powers that be in the city that like, you know, I mean, I've seen my whole life and I feel like as a white person in the South, like this is part of what I have to, it's part of my work, you know? So, yeah. Um, I don't have much to add. I mean, I would just say that in terms of, um, you know, we're, we're participant media, they, they are our partners in this film and they, you know, part of what they do, they create, they create an impact campaign um, to support the film. And so there is a lot of work, um, I'm not, this is not exactly answering your question, but in, you know, th there are partnerships that, that they're trying to help with, you know, like with the EPA and connecting the EPA to the community and, and, um, and, and, and ha you know, there are tools that, that um, have been created to help um, people tell their own family stories, to help connect other descendant communities, um, that kind of thing. So that, that, is, um, that will be an ongoing effort, um, you know, for, for the next year is to, is to amplify as best as we can. I mean, this is an activist community. And so just to continue to amplify the work that they're doing um, so that, 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 you know, to get to, so that conversation can, can get bigger and bigger.